Come here. Got to sneak it by. They want something off the surface a little bit, something moving. You know, we get in water about four foot deep, and you can see this bullet weight here with the bobber stop. Golly, I pegged him. Let's see, buddy, just an old male. Uh. Just a young pulse, you know, a small swim bait, weedless there with that bullet weight. And then I got a bobber stop up here. Got to keep her straight. Yeah, I'm just winding it, you know, almost like you would a bladed jig or a spinner bait. It's just the conditions, you know, I need something that I can kind of tick through the top of that grass. And, and there's a lot of people around fishing. And everybody I've seen, you know, is throwing bladed jig or uh, top water or something like that. So I wanted something that I could get down there and just something different than what I see everybody else throwing. And, you know, traditionally, like when I throw this bait at home, it's a shad color on a jig head, like a three quarter ounce out deep or, you know, the back of a spinner bait. But it also works real good. Just a weedless Texas rig. Just winding it around. I don't just you don't have to do nothing, you just reel it. Let the tail do the work. The tail does everything. It's just an old boot tail. And old swim bait's rocking side to side and that tail, you know, is doing the same thing. You now when you rig it there, it's just like any other Texas rig. You want to go right through the nose just enough to make that bait right on the top of the hook and in grass you want to cover the knot so your little tags don't catch grass see i messed up on that one i got it off center it's got to be right in the center for it to swim straight then you just measure it where you want to be at come in on that angle right there straight see how on that one right there see how he's got a little giddy up in his back I'm a little too tight that'll cause the bait to roll so I want to back it out go a little bit deeper just like that where it's perfectly straight see you got a you got a hole and then a point and then an isolated clump out here and then another point Typically, like when they're gonna spawn, they'll pull out right on those points. That, that sand or bottom will be just a little bit harder. They're literally bed right on those points or in those uh, ditches where that current's coming through. I'm probably, you know, we're in about four foot and uh, I'm probably splitting the water. You know, I'm probably two foot deep. You know, I could go down through here, flipping those holes and stuff, and and fish for the ones that's on bed. Or I can wind this thing around. You know, I'm gonna come across some beds. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to them before they know that I'm there. And also, you got fry garters. You got pre-spawn. I mean, it just it's gonna catch all three stages. Maybe. Now a lot of this, whether you think about it or not, there's just, you know, there's lily pads and there's hydrilla, there's high spots, but there's little lanes, 
you know, like current lanes that go through this grass. And that kind of, uh, that's where a lot of these fish are, and I think for two reasons. One is just the fish that are feeding are in there. You know, there's current coming through there, but also fish that spawn. Uh, there's not a lot of current, but enough current that it's the water's moving. But there's, it probably, since every day, you know, no matter which way the wind blows, there's water pulling through there. You can literally see the hydrilla, like out of these seams, it's standing straight up. You get in these seams like this right here, you can see that grass laid over. But also I think it keeps that bottom a little bit harder uh, with the water moving through there. So I think the chances are probably more fish spawn uh, in those little areas. This is a 7.4 heavy cover rod. It's kind of a medium, you know, what, you, what I would kind of call a medium rod. It's got some tip to it. And it just, again, it lets them, it lets them get the bait. You know, I, I can literally, it's like catfish, and I can watch the end of my rod, and you'll just see it. You know, they'll just cut the line. Just another bait to, kind of a search bait. You know, it's cool in spring because, you know, especially on clear water, you really can't see them here. But you get to a lake like, you know, it's got, four or five foot visibility and a lot of times in the spawn I'll go down the bank and throw this thing maybe on a jig head or you know a belly weighted hook and even though you may not catch all of them that come up they tell you where they're at you know off bed or off a log or something like that and you'll see them go back down and I'll have another rod laid down there and you know be able to pitch over there try to catch them it's a good bait to catch fish on, but it's also a good bait to learn where they're at. Cause I can just, you know, I ain't got to slow down and flip. I can just move and cast. All that kind of fun, fun stuff. This is a uh, buck fest. All these are little males. We're gonna come across, we're gonna come across one of them here in a little bit and it's gonna pull back. Sometimes you just gotta pick up the flipping stick. <clears throat> Choked it. So what's going on? And every every little piece is something. Like you see all the the open water like this. A lot of those fish are probably spawning, and they're staging in the edge of this grass. So we got both things. You know, we got both things going on. We can go through with the. Uh, Swim bait, fish, come back, uh, throw, fish the edges. You know, there's a group of fish in this area right here, and there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to catch them. They don't all spawn at once. We finally got in an area that looks real good. It's just kind of a hole in this hydrilla that's clean for some reason. It's not real deep. I mean, just in 50 yards, I've seen 10 beds, 15 beds. So, you know, there's fish that's probably using this, whether they're still here or gone or coming. You want to use a reel that's pretty quick because you got to be able to catch up with them. And, you know, there's days that they hit it and turn. You got to be able to get them, keep them up out of that grass. It's kind of surprised me hitting close to the boat. A lot of times when I'm down here fishing, I'll uh, kind of pay attention. You get a lot of bites at the end of the cast out there, and that's mainly just because they, you know, they feel that you're around. Kind of get a little more 
surprise element on them. That one hit me up there pretty close to the boat. That's how it is down here. I mean, you get, when you get around some fish, they, they'll bite. It's just getting around them. You know, it all looks the same and it's, it's 100% about bottom. Find the right bottom. Come here. Right there in the top. Again, got him good. It's almost. Mm. You know, if you're around shallow vegetation like this, lily pads, grass, water willow, I do it a lot back home around water willow. You know, if you want a finesse approach, um, this is a really good bait for that just texas rigging it you can like i said you can reel it through anything so hope you guys learned something and i appreciate you following along riding along